Welcome, this is part two of how we produced the hardware descriptive language design for Neptune project using MATLAB HDL Coder. HDL Coder turns MATLAB and Simulink designs into freely usable vendor agnostic human readable HDL. We're doing it this way for at least three reasons. First, to produce open source designs using industry standard tools. Second, to provide professional and personal development using open source digital radio projects. Third, to better inform open source tools designers on what industry standards tools are capable of these days and what their advantages and disadvantages are. We hope that this improves open source tools for FPGAs. We log into MAT, open up MATLAB, in this case MATLAB 2023A, add our directory to the path, and run the section of OFDM.M that loads the pre-calculated workspace and opens the Simulink model for Neptune development. We can access HDL Coder several ways. In part one, we right-clicked on the device under test and selected Workflow Advisor from the context menu. Today, we open HDL Coder from the Apps or Applications tab. The HDL Code tab, we can see Workflow Advisor, HDL Block Properties, HDL Code Advisor, Settings, Generate HDL Code, View Code, and a bit more. We see our Simulink model with the Device Under Test part highlighted. We start Workflow Advisor and we see the introduction screen and our workflow path in the left-hand pane. It's nice to have the workflow in order laid out like this. As Front242 taught us, one, you lock the target, and two, you fix the fail. In this case, we need to flip a setting in the Simulink model so that HDL Coder treats the subsystem as an atomic unit. Here is that setting in the upper left. Three, you slowly spread the net of allowing an unsupported version of, of Vivado. Now this might trip us up later, and we may have to roll back versions and do more work here. That's okay, we can do that. But there's a reason that we're trying hard to use 2022.2. And four, you check the box. The version of Vivado we want to use shows up in section 1.1 after we checked the box to allow unsupported versions. This version, 2022.2, was settled on after a lot of experimentation and exasperation. It's the one that matches the LIB IIO API in Petalinux and the LIB IIO API in the required utility for radio profile generation from analog devices. LIB IIO stands for Library of Industrial Input and Output. And this API is what analog devices uses in order to communicate with their radio chips. This required utility is called TES, or Transceiver Evaluation Software. It's how you generate the profiles, and not using it is extraordinarily painful. Moving to different versions of the tools created an insurmountable API mismatch problem with the utility from analog devices and the APIs in Petalinux. Um, Analog Devices, for some unknown reason, does not maintain older versions of the utility program. And the teams that work on Live IIO and the teams that work on the utility program don't seem to communicate with each other. There are efforts to fix this, uh, to get around having to use TES and this API mismatch problem. We're not the only ones affected and unhappy. But until, the, until this is fixed, we'll have to have everything match with the version of the utility that we have access to. And that is the one that matches with 2022.2. So that allowed us to set up a version of Petalinux to produce Petalinux and to get an HDL uh, reference design exported and all of that moved to our FP FPGA development station in the lab. And we were able to control the radio from Vitus using live IIO calls in C. That was great. So that's where we're at, and that's why we want to use this version. Next, we have two warnings about support packages. We go ahead and install them. We get these packages from the add-ons menu of MATLAB. It's on the right-hand side of the in the Home tab. In the add-on Explorer, you can find all sorts of stuff. Our packages are in there, and we go ahead and install them. The packages require additional libraries, and those are disclosed in pop-up windows. Now we're down to one warning about the unsupported version of Vivado. Section 1.2 of Workflow Advisor sets the target reference design. 
This HDL reference design is from analog devices and is available from their GitHub. Now notice it's a relatively ancient sounding 2019.1 and it's not what we have used in order to generate our Petal Linux um, or the platform project for, for Vitus. Um, it doesn't match the Vivado we're using to generate the HDL code, but we don't seem to have a choice here. There is no other selection in the drop-down box. So worst case, we're going to have more errors later on. We may, have, or if we are able to produce code, we may have to hand edit anything that that is changed from 2019.1 to 2022.2. So we'll see. You can see how important tool version harmonization is in this type of work and how quickly things can get messed up when you're integrating the tools and products of multiple teams. In this case, we're trying to use tools and products from Xilinx, Analog Devices, and MathWorks. Each of those teams or companies in this case might have internal schisms that affect the usability of the tools and products. When we design open source tools, we need to take stuff like this to heart. So we pass that check and now we're up to the set target interface or section 1.3. Now here's where our current data type, which happens to be double complex, stops us. HDL coder needs fixed point. Our next video will be, will be about how to update the design for fixed point. There are utilities in Simulink that will help us with this. Data type decisions are very important and can have a huge impact on the performance of a design. So here's a last look at the design as it was today, and there will be more soon. Thank you so much for supporting our work. If you'd like to be more involved, or if you have advice for us, corrections, ideas, please visit us at openresearch.institute and select the Getting Started section, uh, or contact us through, uh, through comments here. Uh, looking forward to talking to you, and see you next time.